It is ungodly cold today, which is good because we're gonna talk about the temperature. Hi, I'm Matt and this is Not Enough Tech and uh, I'm holding this very unimpressive looking but very impressive in practice sensor. This is obviously Xiaomi ZigBee enabled sensor for B home automation and it monitors temperature and it monitors uh, humidity. Now by default it reports every 15 minutes but if you press the button it says OK, I'm connected. Trust me, my Chinese is so perfect. Uh, it will actually send the temperature data as well on the button press. So we're going to talk about integrating this into Node-RED. And if you follow me closely, you're probably aware of my uh, $5 thermostat, uh, which I've made a couple of weeks ago. And well, I've integrated this one as well. So uh, let's jump into a showcase and then I'll uh, walk you through uh, the steps required to get this to work. So since sensor itself isn't impressive, let's take a look what you can do with it. On this dashboard, you can see the chart I've made and the temperature reporting. Now I've added uh, Fahrenheit as well as Celsius temperature and humidity. So you could uh, actually read the temperature in your preferred format. And that's unfortunately isn't supported by default and has to be done in Node Red. The second thing I done apart from this chart is obviously added and uh, that's uh, to my automation. So as you can see, I've integrated this also with my uh, Nesta-like thermostat. And uh, the sensor from Xiaomi is the one upstairs and the one downstairs is the DHT11 attached to the Sonoff. Now with two toggling switches, I can set which temperature is being monitored. So if I change the temperature to 15, right now it's gonna be uh, looking at the temperature from downstairs and trying to match the heating according to temperature from uh, downstairs. So it takes a couple of moments to actually uh, make this change. So you're not going to see, see it straight away. Uh, however, uh, it basically allows you to control the zones and the heater. Since I don't have a split between upstairs and downstairs heating, uh, there isn't much more precise controls I can do. But for the daytime, I usually stick to downstairs temperatures in terms of heating and for the nighttime, I use the upstairs. So that way I don't have to run the heater for more than required. Let's take a look at the node red. First of all, you have to connect the Xiaomi hub and obviously that's going to report the values as a command uh, report and the values are as follows. You'll see that uh, there are two reports for each um, aspect of it. So you get one with the temperature, which looks like this, and the value is here. What you have to do is divide the value by at, uh, 1000 to receive the decimal space value, and that's 21 degrees and 52. And uh, in terms of humidity, you've got the value also like this, and divided by 1000, you have 48% humidity. Uh, however, if you're going to use the node like I did in here, so you can just uh, set it to uh, just values. If you get the full data, it's going to give you the full data that you just seen. But if you just uh, get the values, you'll get a set of additional information. And uh, additional information looks like this. So you're going to get your humidity and temperature in a single uh, object. You're also going to get the voltage uh, in volts and voltage in levels, so low, medium, high. And uh, that's very beneficial because you have both of them in a single payload. Now, that's going to be delivered twice for whatever reason. I think it's triggered by the fact that uh, Xiaomi Hub will deliver, or the temperature sensor will deliver two different payloads. So I've put the limit node in here. And that first setup in here is just a setup responsible for that chart I was running, uh, showing you earlier. So this is the chart. I've got the temperature in uh, Celsius, Fahrenheit and percentage, and I'm just going to show you how to calculate it. To generate the chart like this, you need to supply three different topics with three different payloads. So I've created here three different payloads and uh, I'm changing the topics of the payloads received. Those payloads are being given to me by function node with three outputs. So there's going to be payload one, two, and three. One containing temperature in C, and one temperature in F, and one humidity. So if I'm going to open this, you'll see how it's done. First of all, the both, well, the three values there, temperature in uh, Fahrenheit, humidity, and uh, 
Celsius are being rounded down. I don't care for decimal point, it's not really that accurate anyway, uh, in terms of uh, you know mistakes on the sensor, so for my accuracy is great. And if you want to calculate the um, Fahrenheit temperature, we have to do is just to get the temperature in C, multiply by 1.8 and add 32 degrees to it, and you've got your Fahrenheit. Now, to report back with these, uh, what you have to do is just send them to an array, and I have an array in here, which is message 1, 2, 3, and then variables message 1, and that's my payload, uh, which is temperature in C, second temperature in F, and uh, uh, lastly, and uh, humidity. And that's how I push three different uh, payloads from a single uh, payload. So that's how the chart works. Now, if you have multiple sensors, there's a couple of things you can do. First of all, you can integrate the upstairs and downstairs temperature, and that's what been shown uh, previously. So I'm just gonna jump into that. So upstairs is my uh, Xiaomi sensor downstairs is my uh, DHT. So let's jump into the and uh, order it back again and I'll show you. This is upstairs, this is downstairs. That part is already part of the Nest thermostat if you remember uh, Nest. Uh, this is exactly this part in here. So going back to the node red you'll see that what I've done was a couple of changes. First of all I'm setting an average temperature before the update. The update has changed to uh, just use the payload because both nodes uh, supply temperature in a different object. So I needed to set that object into a payload. So in this case, uh, Xiaomi uh, stores it in payload.temperature, and in this case, the DHT was storing it in DHT11.temperature. So I've changed that into a payload, submit that into my dashboard average the temperature between two sensors and then update the thermostat. That, this is the best way if both sensors are on the same floor uh, and the temperature, you just want a mean temperature from that floor. Now, if you want to go a step further and did what I've did with the toggles and monitoring the different sensors, if you see, if I'm gonna toggle to monitoring upstairs temperature, that thermostat was gonna shut off soon because the temperature upstairs is higher than 16 degrees and I've set 16 degrees limit. Now, this is done in here and basically we have very similar setup with uh, small differences. Now, first of all, I'm gonna, sorry, I'm gonna move this aside so you'll see what's happening. This is a controlling node. I've talked about the controlling node in my tutorials for Node-RED. So basically, switches in here are responsible for turning on and off these two flows. So if this flow is enabled, the information goes from here to the update, but this remains closed. And if this one's enabled, the information goes from this sensor, but this route remains closed. And I control that with two switches. The switches are linked together like this. So when I press this switch, it will disable this switch and send the opposite value uh, to controller of, the, of that flow. And the same happens all the way around. So if I'm gonna play with this switch, it will toggle the switch to opposite position and will disable or enable the appropriate setup in here. That way I can track one of the temperatures. So when I do this, obviously you can see that's changing uh, on the widget itself. And it's a very good setup for having two different sensors on two different floors. So during the day you could monitor the downstairs where you live more, unless you live more on upstairs. And for me, the temperature there is lower. And in the evening time, when I spend my time in office, I just control upstairs. So this entire setup is basically right now used in my nest. And as you can see here, uh, I have it deployed and controlling my temperature depending on the values for each sensor. If I am gonna get to the point when I have actually a way to control my radiators, I'm gonna implement that as well and get some more Xiaomi sensors to report for each room. Since they're small and cheap, I'm gonna get a couple of these uh, to be placed in uh, most crucial areas of my home. You can actually get one for each room and then have a really clever reporting system. Uh, down the line somewhere, maybe I'll get uh, some controllers for the radiators. So each radiator would be linked to one of these and only enable the radiator when it's required. The job isn't that difficult in terms of uh, coding. The most difficult and expensive part would be adding this to your radiator. 
so that's it, I guess, for now. So thank you so much for watching, guys. If you want to be notified about the further up updates and upgrades and new articles, you know how to use the social media, everything is linked for you down below. And if you require some code information and written down tutorial instead of watching this video, obviously there is a link in the video too. So thanks so much for watching guys and I will see you in the next video. Take care, bye.